As global leaders meet in Austria to deliberate how to salvage the 2015 nuclear deal, Iran says they're ready to restart nuclear activities. Also, Iran is calling out the United States as the ones in violation of the Obama-era nuclear deal. I think the atmosphere was uh, constructive and the discussions were good. Uh, I cannot say that we resolved everything, but I saw, I can say that there are lots of commitments to the uh, JCPOA and its survival. All right, so what's it going to take to get Europe and other nations on the same page as the U.S. against Iran? Yeah, here to weigh in on that very important question is national security analyst Ryan Mara. Ryan, thanks for being with us this morning. Thanks for having me. So are you surprised by European leaders saying that they want to uh, keep this deal intact, considering Iran has already broken it by increasing uh, uranium en enrichment? I'm not surprised at all because they want to cash in. I mean, the politicians, just like here, are connected to businesses, and those businesses are looking at the Iranian marketplace and saying, look, especially if Trump were to not be reelected, that's a big business opportunity for us. And so it raises the question in the minds of the Europeans, well, is the Iranian regime going to outlive Trump? Because yeah. if that is the case, then it makes sense that you want to uh, get closer to the Iranians so that you're there ready to cash in the moment you have the opportunity. Up until that point, when the United States forces Europe and other countries to choose between the American marketplace or the Iranians, we win every time, no matter how much they protest. Yeah, you know, I mean, the status quo, and you see the same thing with North Korea, is, you know, they, they do these deals where, and it's almost sad in a way, where it's like, we're going to pay you if you promise not to wreak havoc on the rest of the world. Right. I mean, how ridiculous is it to, to negotiate from such a point of weakness against these regimes? Right. And so there are some voices in Washington that would say, oh, well, if we compromise and we get them to lessen their aggression in exchange for some type <laughs> of deal, isn't that short term increase in security a win? I say no, because I'm sick of these conflicts. I want to win. I don't think that we need to be stuck in these situations forever. And yes, yeah, some more risk comes involved with having a tougher policy, but it avoids war in the future and it gets this done with so that we have to pass it down to the next generation. Specifically, what I'm thinking of is the debate over how you handle the Iranian regime itself, not just its nuclear weapons program, not just the sponsorship of terrorism, because I think we need to bring back the Cold Warriors who defeated the Soviet Union and say that is the best way that you avoid military conflict. Let's end the Iranian regime peacefully. All right. So what do you think President Trump should do? Do you think that he is capable at this point of negotiating a new nuclear deal? Absolutely. Uh, because but they have to come to the table, too, and they say they don't want to. Well, they publicly say that they don't want to, but that's what is to be expected because they're not going to show weakness. Behind the scenes, everybody knows that there's ways through third parties of communicating. And so I wouldn't be surprised because they're, the regime is in such a bad position right now. If one day they did come to us with a deal and they said to President Trump, look, I've got the key to you being reelected or just to have a great legacy. We will concede on nuclear weapons and terrorist groups and offer this fantastic deal. But in return, you have to betray the Iranian people and help us stay in power. And if that happens, it's going to be a very difficult situation for the Trump administration to handle. Yeah. Let's get to a second topic here. We want to talk about Israel for a second. They have this new uh, missile shield defense system. Mm -hmm. It's U.S. backed that they have. Uh, there's been a lot of anti-Israel sentiment coming out of Congress lately. Uh, talk about this relationship between the U.S. and Israel, especially when we're talking about Iran, how important they are. Right. This is purely a defensive system. So this should not offend you or be viewed as threatening unless you plan on attacking Israel, because this right. is a 10 year long project. Iran takes us as a threat. A absolutely, because yeah. this is basically striking a bullet with a bullet. I mean, it's that advanced. So if you're trying to launch a nuclear attack or some other type of WMD warhead at Israel, they have the capability to destroy it. It's an amazing capability. The problem is, is that the adversaries of Israel have so many missiles that if they launch a giant attack, you're not going to be able to stop all of them. Wow. But you can stop some of them. I mean, it still is a big step in the right direction. Um, are you this? I'm sure that you're not surprised by the resolution, that anti BDS resolution that passed by almost 400 votes in <laughs> Congress. Right. And the BDS movement, we've really got to be clear about what this is. Y yes, it's cloaked in all this political rhetoric. But if you look at the people who yeah. create it in the first place and who advance it, they have ties to Islamic terrorists. Yeah. I mean, that can be proven is that that's the mobilizing apparatus for support for this thing mm -hmm. it is literally groups connected to Hamas. Wow. Well, the, the care, as you said, yeah. And, and those types of groups. several right. others. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.